So next I'll start off with moving load definition. I'll go to moving load. So here you have list of codes to select from. I'll select BS code. So in Midas Civil, moving load analysis can be performed by three step process. So first you need to define the lane on the bridge and then select the vehicles that would be coming onto these lanes and next you can specify the moving load cases how uh, the vehicle should come up and how you make the uh, moving load combination and the cases so traffic line lanes and traffic surface lanes so if you use beam elements you can go for line lanes and if you have any surface elements like the plate elements then you can define the lanes by this option called traffic surface lanes as we have beam elements so I'll go to traffic line lanes to define my lanes I'll click add I'll give the name as lane 1 so here it would be asking for your lane width so I'll change the units to meter kilonewton. so I'll take the lane width as 3 meters and eccentricity as shown in this figure so it's from the chosen uh, reference so you can see this blue line this a distance would be eccentricity I'll give this as 0 give the wheel spacing as 1 meter so if you have the lane and uh, if you need to do the traffic lane optimization like I'll just show you in the help manual I'll press F1 so neatly the explanation is given so this is what the traffic lane optimization mean so if you have a vehicle and the lane width which is more than the vehicle width so the Midas civil will keep uh, the vehicle in three positions if you turn on the vehicle lane optimization so you can refer all these uh, explanations so for now I won't take that I'll click on cross beam so here if you see the difference so you have the lane element and the cross beam so what do you mean by lane element is whatever the V load that would be coming would directly go onto the lane element that we have selected but if you select cross beam then first the load would be transferred to the cross beam and from the cross beam the load gets distributed to the main girders so this is what happens in a grillage analysis so I'll select the cross beam so for that you need to select the cross beam group for so beforehand we have grouped all of these cross members under this cross beam moving load so you can go to group double click on them so these are our cross beams so this is for the load distribution so if you have any skew angle you can specify that as well so here you need to select the reference axis so by this point with these methods you can select I'll click on two points select here first so I'll select only the girders so I'll go to works tab double click activate only girders so I'll select the first point here and the last point automatically uh, the table gets generated with respect to the elements I'll click apply click cancel and show you what uh, does the lane 1 mean so we can display here you can zoom in so this is my reference element and this would be my lane width so this is how you can specify the lane similarly now I'll add other two lanes I'll give name as lane 2 I'll give the eccentricity as 3 meters I'll select cross beam cross beam moving load click here I'll select this point and the end point and click apply now I'll change to lane 3 give the eccentricity as 6 I'll delete this table click here so from this reference line based on my eccentricity I'm specifying the lanes click ok 
So this is how you can formulate your lanes. I'll display all of these lanes. Right click, display. So if you zoom in, so this is my lane 1. From here I have given eccentricity of 3 meters. So thereby I have defined the lane 2 at this location. And then from here 6 meters is the eccentricity to the center line of the lane. So this would be my lane 3. So lane 1 from here lane 2, lane 3. A land display. Click escape. I'll click on vehicles now. So here you can uh, user defined vehicle is available. So you can specify user defined vehicle. Click on add standard. So I'll select BS 5400. So you have the vehicle type to choose. All the vehicle distances and the relevant loads would automatically come up. I'll give 30 units HB30 and HA. I'll click OK. So I'll select this vehicle. Click on moving load cases now. I'll click add. So you can select the load model and the auto live load combination. So I'll click F1 here. So this is our help manual. So you can select when BS is selected for moving load case and the vehicle is H and HB auto. So here you can see the auto live load combination. The software will automatically organize based on the selected code, the factors. And I'll select the type of design combination factor service and the combination of load size combination one. So here you can define the sub load case. So where you can specify uh, the straddling as well. So I'll click on add. So the scale factor I'll take it as one. So I have defined three lanes. So the maximum number of loaded lanes I'll take them as three. I'll select the vehicle that I've defined which is an HA and HB auto. So these are the three lanes I'll select for this vehicle and I'll take lane 1, lane 2 straddling, HB straddling. So software takes care uh, automatically about the HB straddling between the lane 1 and lane 2. I'll click OK. I'll give the name as HA plus HB 30 auto. So this is my combine moving load case name. Click OK. Click close. So now first we define the lanes, then the vehicles, then the moving load cases. So this completes our moving load definition. I'll click on activate all or symmetric view.